the academic conference poster presentation. The joys, right? How do you design a poster that is not going to make people wish they'd had that laser eye surgery? And how do you present it in a way that doesn't have people shrinking away like Homer Simpson in that bush scene? Let's be honest, the poster session at the academic conference has got a bit of a reputation. You walk into a room of lukewarm coffee, biscuits and enormous boards covered in Times New Roman font size 8. You're squinting, you're awkwardly edging between people, pretending to read something that pretty much looks like a journal article that's been printed out and glued to cardboard. It's a lot, but it doesn't have to be. Poster presentations are actually a brilliant opportunity to share your work, especially if you're not ready to give a full paper yet, or you want something a little less intimidating for your first conference. And when you get it right, a poster can really make your research and you stand out. So how do you make a poster that grabs people's attention and actually communicates your research and doesn't require a magnifying glass to read? Let's talk about it. Oh, almost forgot, if we haven't met before, I'm Dr Elizabeth Yardley and I have made it my mission to shout from the rooftops that when it comes to finishing your PhD, there isn't some massive big secret. There isn't some magic formula or mysterious code or morning routine that you just haven't figured out yet. It's way more boring and straightforward than that. It's a process. It's one tiny step followed by another tiny step. That's how you get there. And I'm here to help you figure out what that looks like for you. So if doing the whole conference thing is part of that process for you, let's get into it. What is the point of a poster presentation anyway. A poster is basically your research at a glance. It's not supposed to tell people everything. It's supposed to spark interest, give people a little flavour of your work and start a conversation. Think of it as like an academic version of a movie trailer. And during a poster session at an academic conference, attendees come in, they walk around the room, they stop at the posters that catch their eye, and you'll usually stand next to your poster or in the vicinity of it, ready to talk to people about it and answer their questions. So the poster draws them in and then you bring it to life. You fill in the gaps. You answer their questions. So how do you write and design your conference poster? Let's start with the obvious. You are not writing a journal article. You are not writing a book chapter. You're designing a visual presentation. So your aim is to communicate your research clearly in a way that's going to attract attention from across the room. And in order to get to that point, here's what you need to do. First up, use a design tool like Canva. I just want to caveat this part, okay? I am not sponsored by Canva. I am not getting paid by them to push it on you. It's simply that this is a fantastic tool and there's a great free version of it, and I've used it for years, and it is so simple and easy to get to grips with. So I always advise people to use Canva because it's gonna save you so much time. Let's have a walk through the free version so I can show you how it works. Okay, so first up, we go to canva.com and sign up for a free account. Then we need to opt to create a new design, and you can put custom measurements in here too. So say we need to do an A1 size portrait poster that's 594 mil by 841 mil. So we type that in, we click here, and there we've got our blank poster. Now you can build this from scratch using the text and the elements that you've got down the side here, like this. or you can grab a template and you can customize it. So you go to design, click templates and type in poster and it will come up with poster templates. You can get more specific underneath in terms of looking at the things it suggests, so have a play around. And these templates are great because they've already had the eye of a graphic designer over them, so they look nice already. You just replace the text and the images with your own text and images. And then when you're done, you click share up here in the top right corner and you've got some options to download your poster in different formats. Boom, done. Now that was a very quick tour, but if you want me to do a more detailed video on this, can you let me know down in the comments? And let me know what kind of thing you want me to cover in that. 
Also, whilst we're on the topic of comments, have you done a poster presentation at a conference? How did it go? What advice would you give to people who are thinking about doing a poster presentation at a conference? If you're thinking about doing one this year, next year, what do you want to know? What are you worried about? What are your concerns? Let's have a chat about this in the comments. So get typing. Next up, cut the words. This is a big one. So many of the posters that I've seen at conferences literally have just got essays pasted onto them. Nobody wants to stand there reading a thousand words in font size nine, juggling a cup of lukewarm tea in their conference tote bag. And here's the golden rule. If somebody needs to stand less than a metre away to read your text, it's too small. What you want to aim for is short, clear sentences. Bullet points used sparingly. Font size 24 or higher for body text. And font size 48 or more for headings. And everybody always comes back at me with this. They always say, well, I've got so much to say, I can't fit it all on the poster unless I make the text smaller. And my response to that is, well, that's what the conversations around the conference posters are for. That is where you can fill in the gaps. You can expand on the details. If you've got more to say than fits on the poster, that's great. That's what all the chat is for. Make sure you structure it clearly. So have really clear headings. Your title, which is short, snappy and informative. Your aims or research questions. Your method, your key findings or your key themes. And your conclusions or implications. And if you want to direct people to more information from your poster, put a cheeky little QR code on there. Link that to the full paper. Link that to your email address. Now, let's talk about graphics and visuals and that kind of thing. Charts, graphs, diagrams, photos, they can do a lot of the heavy lifting on a conference poster, especially if they're clearly labelled and they're relevant and they're easy to interpret. Just make sure that they are actually helping you tell the story of your research, that they're not just taking up space. Why was there a picture of a fruit bowl on a conference poster about the UK government's teenage pregnancy strategy? Yeah, I actually saw that at a conference in the early 2000s and it still keeps me up at night. And if your research doesn't really lend itself to charts or graphs or diagrams or that kind of thing, consider creating something like a visual timeline, a concept map, or even some nice participant quotes. And there are some lovely graphics on platforms like Canva to help you with that kind of thing. What not to do? All right, let's get into the please don't do this section. And these are the things that just happen far too often and make conference posters so hard to engage with. Don't copy and paste chunks from one of your thesis chapters. That long paragraph from your literature review, it doesn't belong on a poster. Always think about the needs of your reader, the needs of your audience. So the audience for a conference poster have got particular requirements. They've got particular needs that are different from people who are literally sitting down with your thesis with dedicated time to go through it. Next up, don't forget about contrast and colour. Light grey text on a white background is a nightmare. You want to keep your text dark and your background light or vice versa. You want to make sure that there's enough contrast so that everybody can read this comfortably. Really bright, overwhelming, loud colours and strange fonts, not great as well. Don't over-design it. Yes, Canva and platforms like it are amazing. And when you first learn how to use these things, it can be very tempting to just throw everything onto your poster. But you don't need 12 different fonts and 17 graphics and a rainbow gradient. Stick to two fonts maximum, a simple colour palette and a clear layout. How to actually present your poster. When the poster session starts, you'll usually be asked to stand near your poster. It can feel a bit awkward at first, but the thing you've got to remember is that most people are curious, most people are friendly. There's a reason why they've gone to that conference. There's a reason why they're going to the poster presentation session because they are genuinely interested in what other researchers have got to say. So if they stop and look at your poster, smile and say something like this. Hi, this is my research on, insert topic, would you like a quick overview? Then give them the 30 second version of it. You don't need a script, you don't need to rehearse it, you just need a casual explanation of your research. 
what you studied, why it matters and what you found. And if they ask questions, great. If they just nod and move on, also fine. And every person who comes to look at your poster, you've got to see the interaction with them as an opportunity to practice talking about your work. And you never know who you might meet. And as I mentioned earlier, the QR code. The QR code can be really valuable, whether you've got that on your poster or you've got that somewhere else. It can be a helpful thing to bring along with you to point somebody somewhere else, like to your LinkedIn profile or your blog or a website. And that could be really helpful for people who are curious about your research, but they don't have a load of time to invest in talking to you about it right there and then. Because you've got to remember, conferences can be quite busy. <clears throat> conferences can be times when they are just massively overwhelmed with other stuff. They're probably doing their own presentation, whether that's a poster, whether that's an actual session. They've got loads going on. You've got to network. You've got to catch up with people. So conferences, bleh, confer conferences, <laughs> conferences can be quite there, quite busy. So by having something that allows people to look up your work in their own time, that's a really helpful thing to do. And finally, we have got to talk about the elephant in the room, right? So poster presentations, are they just the pound shop or the dollar store version of a conference presentation? Yep, someone needed to say it. It's what we've all thought at one point, and it's what other people have said to us at some point as well. And I just want to be clear, OK, poster presentations are not a lesser form of conference participation. They are a different form of conference participation. They are a fantastic way to get feedback, to practice sharing about your research and to connect with people who are genuinely interested in your work. So embrace the Canva templates, cut that text down. And make something that is eye-catching, that is clear, that is conversation worthy. Your poster is not a lecture on paper, okay? It's a conversation starter. Always think of a conference poster as just a part of that presentation. So the conference poster presentation is the poster, but it's also you talking about it. So it works together with you. If you want more tips on conferences, you might want to start with a video that's appearing on your screen right now. And this is about how to survive conferences if you are quite an introverted person who's not keen on peopley things like conferences. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I've taken the various things that I've learned from going to conferences as an introvert over the years and I've put them into that video for you. So go and check that out. I'll see you in there.